Hey, what's going on, everybody? Today, the honor to chat with American Americana folk singer, songwriter, multi instrumentalist Aspen Jacobson. In this newest episode, Aspen joined me to talk about the significance behind different eras of her life, move to California, love for old time music, songwriting session with Sylvia Silvestri, creation behind Shouldn't Give a Damn, whether she sees herself entering a new phase of her life anytime soon, and more. Now, with that being said, we join my conversation with Aspen. Hello, Aspen. Hello. I mean, it's great to be able to chat with you. I mean, we were just talking about uh, before we started recording this episode that we were talking about your different eras and stages of your life. Um, I guess we just talked about obviously being. I guess the previous year was your fire era. Yeah. And now, and now it's your water era, and it's interesting how that all sort of comes together because. You know, we we hear a lot about Taylor Swift and her Eras tour and the different stages of her musical career that has already taken by storm, and and now she's coming out with a whole documentary about you know her her whole Eras tour uh, that's coming out in theaters, which is exciting to if you're a Swifty fan, especially. Um, but I mean, I really want to know. I mean, what I guess. What sort of goes into those eras of your life, I guess, now describing it as like different elements? You know what I mean? Because you said like last, the previous year was a fire era. Now to this year is more of a water era and sort of like finding your way, finding your way through it. I mean, but describe like what those eras mean to you, I guess. Yeah. So last year, I, well, and it wasn't just last year that I started writing the music of that album. So it was probably the last two and a half years. I I went to a boarding school, which was an international school. And I learned about all these different ways of thinking and ways of life. And I definitely had a culture shock living, <laughs> living in Michigan in like the suburbs. And then just being around a whole bunch of different people who have a, like just a bunch of religion, ways of like faith and politics. And so I, I definitely was overwhelmed. And then I, I put that into my, my songs, but then how I relate that to fire, I guess, is just the passion of the people that I met along the way. And then therefore being passionate myself and at, at the very end of the album, it kind of feels like a phoenix rising from the ashes. That's what my last song is supposed to feel like. And it's supposed to help me, I guess, transcend to a different, a different stage of my life. Cause like, I'm so passionate, but I'm, I'm over that, that fiery passion and I'm coasting now. I'm more cool and calm like water. And now I mean, I, I recently moved to, to California and I'm by the ocean a lot. This summer I spent almost every day near the water and it, it, like, it's not just symbolic, you know, like it's, it's real. And that just kind of comes out in my music. And this is something that I don't think about much, but I just recently started thinking about it because I was looking at songs that I may put together for a new album and seeing what the connections are and the ties and all of them have some kind of lyric about water so i just thought that was interesting yeah i guess no i totally get that and if you don't mind me asking because you talked about you just mentioned actually about the move to california Mm -hmm. um and we're talking about all these errors in your life but i want to talk about and you're talking about like the word symbolic and i guess now like correlating that with your move to california how symbolic was that in your life was that sort of the one of those stages in your eras that you sort of experienced or was that sort of a thing where you just felt that there was there was a need to move to i guess broaden your horizons in, t- in terms of musical aspects um i mean how symbolic was that in your life I think it was incredibly symbolic, but it, like it, it wasn't, it hasn't been an easy transition. 
but it's been a transition I feel like I've had to make for my music for school because I, I, I attend USC right now for popular music and I'm, I'm coming at music a different way than I have my whole entire life because I, I mostly learn by ear and through writing alone in my room or listening to tracks and not really focusing on the theory of things or playing with other people around me in a band setting. And so I'm, I'm growing a lot, but, and I'm also just, just more responsibility, I guess, adulting. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I mean, it's, it's interesting how you sort of are now very aware of what you want your artistry to be and what your what you want your artistry to sound like um but i mean when when moments arise where you sort of feel that uncomfortable feeling of okay i'm not myself i'm not i'm not putting myself in the position that i want to be in mm -hmm. um like how do you sort of like bring yourself back to that spot where you feel finally I guess that grounded feeling, the grounded emotion of feeling that you're satisfied with what you're doing, but yet there's this character inside of you that's saying that you know I'm not I'm not home I'm not I'm not the person that I thought I was going to be when I was coming here. Um, so can you talk a little bit about that because I feel it's interesting how all these different eras of your life that you describe early on. But at the same time, it's sort of like, I wonder how you sort of build that character within yourself to to know what you're comfortable with and what you're uncomfortable with. Mm -hmm. I can be pretty frightened of change. And I think we all can be as humans. Um, and, you know, we all kind of, we need that schedule and we need those people in our life that we can always go to or that one place where we can just, be ourselves and be present and grounded but a lot of my art and when i get when i have like revelations where i'm like oh like this is awesome or like this is what i'm supposed to be doing those come from the moments where i'm taken out of my comfort zone and i mean i have been taken out of my comfort zone or already this year in terms of just just the people I'm meeting and being around and the types of music that I'm studying as well because I'm studying a lot more jazz and kind of pop R&B which you know I'm Americana so it's it's definitely different but taking all that and then filtering it out into my own morals and my own values and taking what I like and then just leaving the rest behind. But I definitely like to soak up everything kind of like a sponge would. So soak up all this information and then process it, keep it in for a while and then just see how that affects me. But um, sometimes I feel like I can be anything and I can draw so many different sides of myself. And some people may be like, oh, like, you're, t you're too sad or you're too happy or you're too loud or you're too quiet. And it's like, I, I'm all, and we all are all of that. And like, it's our own decision. Yeah. And I guess like, I would probably like label that more of like an inner demon that we all have where like, we just don't, I guess like we do find ourselves sometimes when, when we're in, I guess, life now is, I guess we all find ourselves at one point, just talking to ourselves and like basically like talking to ourselves about like, okay, who are we? Um, you know, what do we want to set out to do? Who do we want people to, how do, how do I want people to look at me? You know, how do I want people to look at my music? How do I want people to, I guess, I don't know how to really describe this, but like how you want people to, I guess take the lyrics from your music in a way as well. And I was talking to um Kindle Inskeep, um, and I was asking her about like 
so in moments where like like we're talking about like that un- uncomfortable moments do you ever just find yourself with a book like a diary and just journal all your thoughts just like just absolutely journal all your thoughts and and put it all in one all in one book and do that on a daily and I she do. says I and, have and, the book right here. and she says <laughs> that it's like something that she feels like relaxes her and, and brings her back to the moment of saying okay I'm Kindle Inskeep. I'm an artist. I'm I'm up up and coming, but uh, I've got I've got this and this to do. I've got goals set out that I want to achieve. So that's what brings me back to my present moment. And I'm curious, like you just talked about that you journal. I mean, does that ever become? I guess I don't want to use this word because I I feel it's so cringy to use this word. But do you ever feel? Do you ever feel it's, I guess, cathartic? to be able to write those things down? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a coping mechanism for me, and so is music. Um, Just being able to sit there with my thoughts. And sometimes it's easier to write it down in some type of way. Because if I'm just laying, laying in bed at night, trying to go to bed for like two hours, my mind's just racing and racing and racing. It's like I, I need something, some way to get that out of my system. And most times I don't need to be talking to someone else about it or a friend about it. You know, I just got to sit with it myself for a while. So, yeah, absolutely. And, and I guess like collaborating with, with other artists also helps you, I guess, really sharpen your songwriting abilities as well at the same time. And I mean, there's one, I guess, one collaboration that um I was I was so captivated by and it was with uh, Sophia Silvestri. <laughs> I don't know if I'm pronouncing her name right, but um I think I have it right. Um yeah, and you know I was I was curious on the the video that I saw on TikTok with you guys sort of like in a songwriting session together and you guys were writing the song called The Diner. And I was like this is such an interesting sort of aspect of how it's like how you sort of like made that whole whole chord progression at the beginning um and i guess there's like a lot of things that we don't see behind the scenes and i think that's something that we don't understand quite often of like what goes into those songwriting sessions and and how do you sort of how do you sort of like find yourself with those chord progressions does that come immediately or is that something that it takes hours for you to nail so that specific chord progression was it was just something I was playing right before. Um, I just really liked the. I mean, I mean they're pretty basic chords that I use in a lot of my songs, but we really wanted to draw attention to the lyrics, and so using something like that that felt more like home because a lot a lot of it's major and open ringing strings, and so something that just felt like home, like the like the diner in the hometown, you know? Yeah, and, and the lyrics in that song was was so, um, I guess, poignant. And there was also the, the reference of, you know, spin me down the aisles. Um, and sort of that, that moment of like, you know, the same old people down the same old block that you, that you grew up in. And sort mm-hmm. of like an ode to your hometown. Um, and it's an ode to people that, you know, the, the streets that you walked um you know the home that you were raised in but then also the people you meet along the way um i mean what does that i guess what is that song even though i think like we've already like understand like the whole sentiment behind it but like if you could explain more about like in depth like what is what does that song the diner mean to you like the like the not only the song but the title itself as well because the title is also captivating the diner well, we um, we both were watching Gilmore Girls at the time, and Sophia was also talking about her own hometown, and you know we get a little homesick sometimes, and so you know we were just talking about being with your family and with people that you know in this small hometown in a diner like Gilmore Girls, and just like stability and the feeling you get but then you also get kind of that bittersweet 
feeling in the lyrics, which I think came from our own personal experience of leaving and missing it, but feel like you're kind of turning into something else as well. And we have a lyric in there that we were really debating over and it was, that's who I was and who I'll always be or something along the lines of that. And we're like, what, what is it? And so that's still something that to this day, we're both still trying to figure out and work out and it isn't completely like set in as a song yet, but I'm really excited what will come out of that. And then something else I really like about just co-writing and doing sessions with people that I'm friends with and I'm comfortable with and I see a lot is that I can kind of live vicariously through their own experiences as well. And it becomes more of an understanding type of situation. And a lot of what I do when I write music is think about, oh, how are people going to hear this or perceive this? But not because I want them to see it as good or as I want it to evoke this type of emotion out of them. I want understanding and I want to understand them. I want them to understand me. And so I also get that same type of feeling in writing sessions. Absolutely. Um, I was actually like wondering, I was just like throwing it out there. If you want to play the diner acoustically right now, I mean, feel free to do it. I, w you know, I would, but I haven't played it in many months. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I remember it well enough, <laughs> honestly. But oh, no problem then, no problem then. I, mean, I think we're going to be recording it soon though. And so. Okay, so there's there's a little bit of she's she's spilling the tea here a little bit. Yeah. Um yeah, I I mean, it's a great song and I think that like, you know, it, it's interesting how I think we're we're seeing a lot more people now write more about their hometowns and similar topics like that that we're seeing in a lot of the songs that are being released. Um but it's actually like interesting how this whole thing happened for you because you know, you're, you're from Michigan, like you're from Michigan. And then you basically found yourself here in Los Angeles or in California. Um, I mean, how was that journey? Was that tough for you to be able to, I guess, leave, you know, the roots that you set in so, so, so deep in Michigan and then being able to now give yourself the opportunity to fly now and give yourself the wings to, to do a career like this. Honestly, I think I had it a lot easier than a lot of other people that I've met here. Um, I did go to a boarding school for two years before I left, and it was also in Michigan, but I'd already kind of not like broken away from a lot of like my friends and family, but I already kind of like separated myself for a little bit and was able to have that alone time to find myself more, I guess. And I've always loved traveling. And I, when I was younger, I'd always be like, can I please go to a new school? Can I please go to a new school? And so sometimes they'd let me switch to a new school just because I liked the feeling of having a fresh start and being around like done with the old on with the new um I, I definitely keep <laughs> some parts of the old you know I have a lot of old friends and but yeah it's just, just always been something that I've really loved to do and traveled and this summer I also traveled a lot so I, I mean I personally love it <laughs> I guess that kind of contradicts what I was saying in the song though <laughs> but <laughs> well talking about travel I want to ask you this question. I mean, if there's one place that you would that you haven't been to, like one place it could be locally, it could be nationally, internationally. Um, if there's one place you haven't traveled to that you want to travel to, where would that be? Man, I got a whole list, but I I definitely want to go somewhere in Scandinavia. I've been to Norway. Norway was great and I'd love to go back. 
I am Norwegian. And so I felt just kind of like an ancestral connection to that place. Um, and I love, like Sweden would be really cool. I love Swedish folk music and the nickel harpa and a, a, just all those instruments that have a bunch of open strings um, and drone tones. And then another place that I'd like to go is Ireland or Scotland. And recently this summer, I was actually working in North Carolina for a few weeks uh, at this place called Swananoa. And it was a big music gathering and musicians from all over the world came. And one week was a Celtic week. And it was it was just some of the most magical music, but also community that I ever felt. You know, you have a bunch, you have like 50 musicians all together and they're all playing and dancing and we're doing these Kaylee dances every single night and everyone's just just these soaring notes and the bagpipes droning. And, you know, that wasn't something I grew up around. And so to feel that, it just, oh, it felt amazing. And I, I love nature as well. And so those places would be great. <laughs> For sure. I mean, I've been to some places. I've been to Seattle. I've been to um, Mexico, Honduras, um, and places like that. Um, I think we are supposed to be going to france and italy and portugal soon so that's gonna be exciting but like at the same time i think that it's so like i find it fascinating how you sort of like have ingrained yourself in this whole old time music um and i guess like you've you've said you said it at you know on your on your bio that it sort of happened when you were at your first music festival Mm -hmm. and I guess now it's stuck with you ever since I mean for me like I love like singing stuff that are old time music I love like the old time country music I love the old time folk music um hey I even love like Sierra Farrell's type of music oh yeah you know Sierra Farrell sort of like if you haven't listened to her version of it wasn't God who made honky tonk angels who's by who was originally sung by Kitty Wells in the 1950s i believe and she made it sound like i was like am i listening to kitty welds like her version of it wasn't god who made hockey tonk angels was i was like oh my god i can close my eyes and i can instantly know who sing, who's singing that song but i wouldn't know the sierra farrell hmm. because her voice reminded me exactly of kitty welds the way she's saying it listen to the original record, then listen to Sierra's voice. It's so hard to separate her voice from Kitty Wells' voice. It sounds so identical. It's crazy. Um, but yeah, Sierra Farrell, so I was just watching her performance. I, remember, I don't remember where it was. Uh, her recent performance um, at a festival or a concert, not sure. But yeah, it was, it was really cool. She was doing a Gordon Lightfoot song. She was doing a lot of her own original songs. She has an unreleased song that she performed, Dollar Bill Bar. It's a really great song too. I mean, so, I mean, just connecting those now with whatever music that you're making, I mean, connecting with old time music, was that just something that you've, you've loved growing up or is that something that just, just came out of the blue? It's just kind of something I happened upon. I really loved arts as a child and musical theater and I, I think I played a little ukulele, maybe a little guitar before I went to the music festival. But when I got there, I think it was the first time I really felt a sense of community through music. And I was I was like the only one under 40, one of the only females, but everyone was just so welcoming and they put me right in the middle of the circle and just played around me and taught me things. But I, I had to figure it out on my own a little bit. And so I was just kind of fucking along. And the thing about old time music is that like harmonically, it isn't that, you know, challenging and it's very predictable kind of where, where it goes compared to something like jazz or even some type of pop music. But 
that, that that's what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be something that everyone can play together and everyone can be like, oh, I know that tune. And not only that, but storytelling and to sharing the stories of these tunes. Or I just wrote this new one about my my wild cat out in the backyard who is climbing a tree or something that was like a, a turning moment in their life. So it, it's, it just fascinates me. And then I also just feel with, with older music, I just feel this ancient kind of connection to it. It feels ancient. I don't know how to describe it, but if a, if a song and a tune is being carried on for such a long time, there has to be something to it, you know? And I think the the ones that have been passed down have meant so much to so many people that I feel like I can kind of hear it and feel it whenever they're played. Absolutely. Well, I mean, talking about music, um, I want to talk about um, your song, Shouldn't Give a Damn. And may I say that was that was probably like one of the songs is like listen to that I was like is that like a young Taylor Swift that I'm <laughs> hearing? Like like I'm I'm not even kidding because it kind of like gave me a little bit of Taylor Swift vibes. Um because it reminds you of her younger years. You know, it's not like this is just like some old like just some random up and coming singer songwriter with their own voice, but like it's it's something that like you can think about Taylor's early time, like early music, and then listen to "Shouldn't Give a Damn," and it was like, okay, so this is like this is an interesting sort of um, era in in terms of your musical career. I mean, uh, briefly talk about that song. I wrote it, I think, after my sophomore year of high school. And so I, I like, I remember trying to play it on guitar and not being able to. And I remember as like the song progressed and I got older, I just, it was so much harder. No, it was so much easier for me to play it. Um, so I think that song definitely kind of taught me how to play guitar. And then uh, lyric wise, it was right after I had my first boyfriend and my first real relationship. And so there was just like a lot of first, like first time trying to do a few riffs on the guitar and uh, first time talking about anything related to the idea of love that I felt like I kind of understood more. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I guess now like wrapping up with this conversation um, and now coming full circle with everything that we talked about in this episode, I mean, do you feel, I mean, do you, do you feel happy? Do you feel satisfied with what you've done so far? I feel proud of what I've done so far and certain stuff that's out there that I've done in the past. I'm like, Oh, that's not me anymore. And I, I, I just got to laugh at it but appreciate it because it it's gotten me where I am today. And you gotta like what you have because like, if you don't, you're just, you're screwed, you know? Like this is what you got. And so you gotta like it. And then if you wanna improve it, which I'm always doing, I'm always trying to improve and get better. Cause I have a lot I need to improve on. I just had a guitar lesson yesterday where I was just like, man, I suck. Like, I really suck. And I, w I went back and I practiced for like two hours. And I was like, I'm just not getting this. I, I just can't do it. But then, you know, looking back, I'm like, no, I, I've come this far already. And it may not seem like that much when I compare it to someone who is, looks like they're doing like better, better off than me, music industry wise, but on my own personal journey, like, I'm doing great. I'm doing, I'm doing okay. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I mean, it's, it's been so wonderful to be able to explore the music that you've released. Um, and also 
just talking about everything that we discussed in this episode. Um, but at the same time, I mean, like, it's got to be like, I, I feel interested enough where I, I, I wonder, like, do you feel you're entering like a new era soon? I'm already in it. I feel like I'm definitely already in it. And I think also just like emotional wise, I've been the most emotional this month than I've ever been in like probably like seven, seven years. And it's really coming out in the way that I treat others and the way I treat myself and my music. And it, there's a lot of reflecting going on right now. And so it's it's definitely kind of like a whirlwind, a little roller coaster of emotions, but it's it'll level out soon. And I think it's it's good. It's always good. So. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me. I, I had such a, a wonderful time to be able to explore everything that we did today. I mean, thank you again. Yeah, no, thank you for having me. Yeah, it's always nice. So, Well, I mean, to the listeners who made it this far into the episode, thanks so much for sticking around. I hope you enjoyed my conversation with Americana folk singer, songwriter, multi-instrumentalist, Aspen Jacobson. Um, you can find her on social media, on Instagram, Facebook, and on TikTok. You can also uh, visit her on aspenjacobson.com to find more about her, her music and her career and uh, what she has coming up. And if you want to help support my show, feel free to share with family and friends or on social media. You can connect with me on all social platforms as well. You can find and listen to my episodes on all podcast room platforms. I've been your host, Shikmi Keltsang. Thanks for tuning into the show. <laughs>